Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of MHI's Roundtable Discussion. Um, as usual, I'm here with my brother Mike, our own Dr. Rudy Everyone, and boy, do we have a treat for you today. We're here joined by Dr. Swan. Uh, Dr. Swan, thank you so much for your time. Dr. Swan is a renowned epidemiologist and expert on environmental health. She's a professor of environmental medicine and public health at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai with over 200 published peer-reviewed scientific papers on the topics of endocrine disruption, infertility, and human health. Her latest book, Countdown, which I recommend everybody to read, How Our Modern World is Threatening Sperm Counts, Altering Male and Female Reproductive Development, and Imperiling the Future of Our Human Race. I mean, if a subject like that doesn't catch your attention, I don't know what else would, but this has received widespread praise for bringing attention to the impact of endocrine-disrupting chemicals, which will lead to hormone imbalances, declining sperm counts, and human reproduction. Dr. Swan, Thank you so much for being here. I can't express to you what an honor it is for us to be among greatness. <laughs> and I can't wait uh, to hear all of your new insights and your new uh, research. Yes, and really, Shana, I have to say, I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> I bought the book when it first came out. Everybody around me, I, I put the book in their laps to be like, everybody needs to know about this. So it's really a pleasure, and I can't wait to share that with our patients. Thank so, you so much. Thank yeah. you again. So I think, the way we're gonna schedule our talk today. I'd like to talk first, the, the first point we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about what is the problem? This is relating to your two, 2017 paper uh, with the sperm count decline. The second big point I wanna make is what are the consequences of this problem? Then we'll talk about the causes, and at the end, we'll talk about solutions. So if you can introduce your book and the paper in 2017 for us. Okay. So the book was published in 2021. It was triggered by the paper, right? right. So why don't I start with the paper, That's right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so to go back before the paper itself, um, there was uh, our paper. There was a much earlier and very famous paper that came out of Denmark in 1992. That's a long time, right? Mm -hmm. And that paper said sperm count had declined 50% in 50 years. Wow. 50% wow. in 50 years, 1% per year. Mm -hmm. So honestly, Rudy, I was skeptical. I wasn't impressed. I, I, and I was on a committee um, from the National Academy of Sciences and they said, well, why don't you look at this and see if it's something we should consider? Mm -hmm. And so I spent six months trying to make that decline go away. <laughs> Asking, well, could it have been due to how the sperm was counted? Maybe mm -hmm. methods changed to make it go down. Maybe the men changed. Maybe they were more obese now, or maybe they were smoking more, or, and so on and so forth, right? Because mm -hmm. that number is so big. Yeah. 50% right. in 1992. Yeah. Wow. Right. And so I was blown away, honestly, to see that after we had done all that for six months of work, three people worked on it, by the way, and nothing changed. Hmm. not to the first decimal place. Wow. There was no change. Wow. So I had to take it seriously. A lot of people had to take it seriously and started saying, seems like there's something going on here, right? Mm -hmm. So um, then I asked, okay, if it's going down and it's not due to methods and it's not due to differences in the men themselves, then it's, it's got to be due to the environment, mm -hmm. right? And so I designed a study that would ask, does the environment affect sperm count, Very right? Good. And that was the study we launched um, in <clears throat> 2000 called the Study for Future Families. And in that we did show significant effects of the environment. But of course, that's not the trend that you're asking about. So I kept following that and colleagues and I got together at a meeting, <laughs> having coffee, and we're saying, shouldn't we update that 1992 paper? Mm -hmm. It's kind of old now, so we'll see what's going on. So we decided to do that. Wonderful team got together. We spent two years combing the literature with an excellent librarian, asking, you know, what, where are their valid estimates of sperm count? We were very, very careful. We didn't include men who were pre-vasectomy, because they would have mm -hmm. been high sperm count. Mm -hmm. We didn't include men who were having problems with fertility, because they would have been low sperm count, mm -hmm. and so on. So we tried to get these, you know, these unbiased um, 
samples of men, and we had other restrictions. You can read it in the 2017 paper, but basically when we put this all together, and it did take two years mm -hmm. to, to comb through this literature, wow. we found, lo and behold, of course. sperm count had declined 1% per year, which is what <laughs> You know, reinventing the wheel yeah. and stuff. Like but so we, you confirmed we, the findings confirmed, of 1992. That's right. We confirmed that with rigorous modern methods because then it was much later. 2017, it's a long time, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, it was viral. It went viral. It was a, a huge impact paper. And as a result of that, um, I was asked to write a book about this story. Mm -hmm. And that's the book that, that we're talking about today. And um, and it doesn't stop there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, so that, that's an amazing amount of work that you did. And you were able to translate that into a very readable story that, yes, an MD can read it. Non-MDs, non-clinicians can get a lot out of this. And I want to stress that point again that sperm count went down 50%, 1% a year. So uh, as a doctor, we know that now, one of the biggest businesses for doctors is IVF clinics. They're opening up everywhere. So fertility is an issue. So now we got an answer, why are we seeing this? We'll talk about the why after, but there's no questions that we're having a problem with fertility. Yeah. Right, right. And I just wanted to sort of make people understand 1% per year, if that was IQ, hmm. 50% drop in a population's IQ in 50 years? I mean, I think we'd be yeah, really that's, concerned, that's wouldn't we? Thought about yes. like that. that's actually <laughs> point. I that's mean, drastic. 1% for sperm, you think, oh, there's a lot of them, it doesn't matter. IQ points? Right. Yeah. yeah. If you can go over the number of sperm, because that was interesting in your book, where you said, I think in the 1950s, I think the, the average sperm count was 60 million, and then now I think 15 million is the lower limit of normal. Okay, so back in the start of this sperm decline study, the count on average, on average. was 99 wow. million per million. That's the concentration. Maybe we should just take a minute and say, yes. so, so there's a lot of sperm in a sample. You can't count all of them, so you count a subset of them under a grid. And so the number of sperm in a little square on that grid um, is a milliliter. That's a milliliter. So you count the number millions in a milliliter. Gotcha. And then if you were multiplying that by the volume of the sample, then you'd get the total sperm count. Right. Gotcha. So you can ask, did the total sperm count go down? Yes. Same rate, a little more actually for really? the total sperm count. For the total. So yeah. wait, question on that, yeah. the ejaculation from a man, I think I saw it's 100 million on average it used to be per ejaculation right. and now it's dropped. Per, no, 100 per, million per milliliter. Per milliliter. Well, yeah, and, and to get the okay. number in the ejaculate, you have to multiply it by the volume, which is a half to a teaspoon. Right. <laughs> a half to a teaspoon, yeah, okay. Yeah, about, would you agree? About, yes, yeah, and, and I know uh, Michael here is about 10 milliliters every time he... <laughs> <laughs> I got 28 million mobile, motile sperms, okay? <laughs> so, so, so really scary to yeah. hear this, and, and it's, it's amazing to me that this is not being thought, taught in medical schools. Most physicians don't know about this. The public doesn't know about this. So this is something we really want to bring a lot of attention to it because it affects not only you on a personal level, it also affects our society. That's right. Um, and, and beyond this, I, I really love that you pointed that in your book, that studies show that guys with low sperm count have worse health outcomes in the future. That's so interesting, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. That, so low sperm count, is, I don't want to scare anybody here, but low sperm count is a marker of future health. Uh, sperm count is a marker of future health, yeah. and low sperm count is a marker of poor, of poor future, future health. health. Wow. And, and particularly more heart disease, more um, diabetes, diabetes, more reproductive cancers, and the big kicker is earlier age at death. Imagine so that's that. a Even marker. longevity yeah. is effective. Longevity. What wow. do you think are the odds of making it the sixth vital sign, as you pointed in your book? Yeah, that, I mean, I don't know who's going to do that, but I... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think uh, with what you just said, yeah. it should yeah, be an absolute sure. next vital for sign sure, for, for sure. dogs and to check. men should know it. Yes. Yeah. So, so women go to their doctor, to their OB, GYN, and they go every year, usually, and get a pap smear, and they get a checkup, and everything's checked out, right? Yeah. Men don't. Men don't. Men don't. Most men 
on the street. You say, do you know your sperm count? I mean, you wouldn't have to. <laughs> I actually do, but <laughs> the average person, no. <laughs> but the answer would be no. No. Um, and, and one reason is that, you know, they just assume that when they're ready to use it, they're good to go, right? Yeah. And sadly, not, that's not, not what always the case. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would say, you know, part of like, you know, when we read the book, and by the way, it, you know, I got to credit Rudy because he kept pushing me and pushing me. Read the book. Read the book. You have to read this book. You have to read this book. Oh, my God. My best agent, right? So, yes. yes. I was the last one to read yeah, the book. Yeah. <laughs> so I read the book, and I was just, I mean, I was floored. And I think that when we all collectively got together on this, it really changed the ethos of our company. Like, it really changed the focus because, you know, we had been seeing this decline for so long, right? And, you know, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, how it affects testosterone and, you know, even uh, psychology. And we had been seeing so many people come yeah. with these effects and we're like, what the heck is going on? And then, you know, this is when I contacted you. I mean, you and your, your work answered such a humongous why for us and and by the way when someone when one of the you know the men and women that we see when we start kind of explaining this to them like you know you're, you're it, we've been having this decline the the big the big question is why why is this happening why is this happening and why don't i know you're about right. it right and you know most right. people are oh yeah i know i gotta exercise and i gotta do yeah. my diet and we'll talk about that but there's another factor that people are not talking or considering. And so when we read your, your, your book, it was like, this makes so much sense, you know? And I'm just here to, for viewers watching, um, and you know, and, and Rudy and, and Mike can attest to this, we're in the trenches every day getting these calls, seeing, you know, Rudy sees the patients and he's very intimate with them. This is real. This is very real. It's affecting everyday people. Um, it's affecting you who's watching this and it will affect your children. So, you know, it's really important. I think your work is so important to talk about from guys and, and, and women in the field who are actually seeing this in reality. Optimizing your health is only a scan away. Select the QR code that fits your profile best. And we look forward to hearing from you at the Medical Health Institute.